Audi, Immortalium here. Today I'm reviewing Utsubora, the story of a novelist. Now, before I start reviewing this manga, let me be clear. This is a weird manga. <laughs> um, that is the most basic way to describe it. Um, it was published in a manga magazine called Manga Erotics F, which, contrary to its name, doesn't necessarily publish erotic content. It um, can cover any content, you know. So I don't know quite why it has erotic in its title, but that's how it goes. Uh, but they're known for some weird manga. Um, the, probably the most popular manga from that magazine translated into English is this one called um, is a Light Chi Light Club, I think. I think that's how you pronounce it. Um, so they do publish weird manga, and this is definitely weird. But uh, the question is, is it good? And the answer is yes, it's very good. It's certainly not perfect as many of those reviews online would lead you to believe, but it is a damn good manga. But let's get into a plot a bit. Um, so, we're introduced to this author called Shun Mizurogi, and a person close to him has just committed suicide. Uh, she's thrown herself off the roof of a building, and she hasn't left any note, um, so no one knows why she did it. And in fact, there's many people who are wondering who she is. Her twin sister shows up, this is the twin, uh, who looks, you know, exactly like her and Shun is, you know, kind of surprised, he's shocked, um, he's kind of wondering, you know, how should I respond to this, particularly when you find out something later. Um, and that's how it progresses, it's a mystery manga, um, there's also lots of other storylines going on, you know, to do with, you know, Shun's niece. His um, editor, his, the policemen who are investigating the suicide, the, the twin, of course, who's called Sakura. Um, it's a very engaging manga. Um, the best place to start is the artwork, uh, because the artwork itself is fantastic. Um, let me just see if I can get you a good example. It uses a lot of negative spacing, but in this case, um, unlike many other manga, which where it's clear that the negative spacing is being used so that the um, backgrounds don't have to be drawn, in this it's more of a case of trying to show isolation. You know, something which becomes very clear once you realize that um, in any shot where there's more than one character, the backgrounds are very well drawn. Um, let me see, I'll be a good example to show you. Um, as I said before, this is a good page of uh, the artwork actually kind of reminds me of Clamp, as in its elongated um, look. It's not quite as beautiful as Clamp's work. Uh, Clamp's work, you know, the characters look always look gorgeous, they always look fantastic. Um, this, it's more kind of the characters are drawn a bit more realistically than Clamp's, but it still has the elongated limbs, it has the kind of distortions of body every so often. Actually, that's the one flaw that I will say about the artwork in this. In the first couple of chapters, there's a couple of frames where, you know, the characters look off-model. You know, their face is slightly out of proportion to their body, or maybe the head is slightly, you know, longer on one side than it is to the other. Um, but that's pretty much corrected. So from an artistic point of view, this is a fantastic manga. From a story point of view, it is still a great manga. But there are some issues with it. Um, and many of these issues are kind of personal, they're not necessarily ones that I can point at the manga for, or like the way it's written. Basically, um, the main plot of this is obviously the mystery. Why did um, she commit suicide? Um, why it has the twin now shown up? How will Shun respond to this? And of course, as it's the story of a novelist, it, you know, once you start reading it, you start realizing, oh, wait a second, he's doing something that he shouldn't be doing. What? I won't spoil because, you know, it is an important point. Although it's something that you can pick up relatively fast within, like, the first two, or two first chapter or two, before it's even, you know, announced that he is doing it. Um, uh, there's um, several other plot threads as well. Um, there, as I said before, there's the police who are investigating um, the suicide. And we begin to find out more about them and about the way they view their, um, you know, incidents and all that. 
Um, there's Denise, who might have a little bit more feelings for her uncle than she probably should. And there is the editor. And the editor plays an important role in this manga. Um, it's not odd that these stories are all, you know, cut away from each other, that they don't interact. Basically, the only reason I'm splitting them up is because they have to do with each kind of character. But they're all, you know, working with each other throughout the whole thing. But the issue that I have with the editor's storyline isn't necessarily so much that he, um, isn't so much how he acts with the other storylines. It's more to do with his own personal storyline. Um, again, it's a spoiler if I spoil what, um, what, what, what it is exactly that I don't like about his storyline. But, uh, suffice it to say that he has two people who he's working with, and one of them is making certain demands that should not be met. The, the Another aspect of this manga that I have an issue with is the sexual content. Now, as I said before, the manga magazine is called Manga Erotic F, and um, of course, just because it's published in it doesn't necessarily mean it has to be erotic. Um, and this is a prime example of that. It has sexual content in it, but it's certainly not erotic. It is... the sex in this is portrayed as kind of horrific, as disgusting and vile. It's... there's no element of beauty whatsoever to do with this. Or any of the romances come to think of it. Um, so it's very much a pessimistic manga, if that's... To, if I have to say so myself. Um, but the character development is excellent, the artwork is gorgeous, um, the story itself, yeah, I do have an issue with the editor's storyline, but the rest of the storylines work very well. Um, the other thing I guess I should also mention is the fact that, considering this is a mystery manga, um, it takes a little bit of a while to build up. I mean, um, first couple of chapters, they're very much setting up the scene for the rest of the story, but once you get into that, perfect. Um, also to discuss Vertical's treatment of this. Um, first of all, I love the cover. Now, I suspect that this might not... maybe... maybe it is. I don't know. I've yet to see the Japanese covers of this. So, for all I know, it could, this could be like the first volume and then this... this is the one who commits suicide. Is the... Um, maybe the second volume. I don't know. It's two and... it's all... it's the complete series. Like, all two volumes in this one book. So, that is good. Um, the I just love the cover. The thing is, I would not have actually read this if it wasn't for what I saw for the cover. Um, what was it? One day I was on UK Anime News, is it? I think it is. I can't recall exactly the website. And each week they um, release, you know, like what manga been released that week, what anime. And this picture showed up, and I was like, wow, you know, <laughs> I need to get this. Well, not quite like that. I mean, like I had to see if it was good first, but I found out it was excellent, and therefore I wanted to get it. Um, I would not have been aware of that. Uh, for on the other hand, um, which brings me to my marketing point on this, Vertical have mentioned that this has not sold well at all, at least in the pre-orders. So now, since release, I don't know. For all I know, it could have sold fantastically. I haven't heard any any you know change on that, but. Considering the pre-orders, they actually said they were gonna, you know, they were tempted to do a limited run of this just simply because, you know, it's not selling that well. Which is a shame because this is an extra manga. Um, vertical treatment itself, um, the pages are, you know, very lovely. Uh, crisp white, you know, nice and thick. Um, the size of it isn't quite as big as their other adult works. It's actually exactly the same height as the Princess Knight and Twin Knights manga which are slightly bigger than the normal manga, taking trusty Yatsuba again, I always measure the size with this. It's, uh, as you can see, it's about the exact same height, but slightly longer, slightly wider. So that's how the trim size works there. Um, and the other thing to mention as well is that, is the translation notes. Now the translation notes in general are actually very good. I'll just give you kind of a read from here. 
particular words left untranslated, etc. That can be looked up online by the curious reader with fair ease, having passed over in favour of subtleties that may not be quite so noticeable or searchable. And it works in general very well. There were a lot of, you know, fantastic pieces of information at the back and, you know, there's the, you know, they didn't bother translating like what a futon is or, you know, what a kotatsu is or, you know, all that jazz. There is one issue though I have with the translator notes. And that is, there is a trans, you know, a um, explanation of Mizurogi's traditional outfit on page 5, etc. Because he spends a lot of the time, you know, dressed up in the traditional outfit. But there is a minor spoiler. Uh, where was the minor spoiler? In the second paragraph, just to warn you, um, re regarding nearer the end of the book. And, of course, you know, that that's kind of not on. You know, you've just put a translation note at the very beginning for page five and onwards, and you've already given away a little bit about the ending. Not too much now. It's like, I mean, it's just kind of a... It's something that I think should have been split off from that and maybe put later. Not necessarily as a translation note because it, you know, it's not a case where you uh, you don't understand what it is. It's a case where it's more significant than you might think. So that was a bit of an issue um, that I had. But overall, do I rec recommend this manga? Yes, I definitely do. It's well worth the read. It is a very tough manga to read. Oh. Actually, just before I forget as well, one thing I must be pleased to mention is that this adult vertical manga is published right to left. You see? Uh, which is something that vertical don't always do. They seem to... T like, okay, I guess in the past it was kind of logical. Um, they released their adult works, you know, flopped left to right. Um, because I think they said that their adult works sold better for graphic novelists than it did for manga enthusiasts, but um, they did f uh, they did leave this you know unflopped, which was fantastic. The other thing as well to point out is, um, and uh, this is more of a question for you guys than it is for you know you know a fact, um, is that Manga Erotics F as a exper is a kind of like an experimental manga magazine, and that means. There's no demographic it is specifically aimed at. Um, reading this, it felt more like a senin, but I have been told it, it that it is a jose. That I cannot say. I it feels more like a senin is what I'll say. But uh, I guess it's up to the individual to decide whether or not it feels more like a senin or a jose. Um, so besides that, yeah, I highly recommend you get Utsubora and definitely support it because. Um, you know, uh, we, we want to get more of this um, author's works translated into English. Um, she does mainly do yaoi, which is something that, you know, I don't know how good her yaoi works are. But she does write other, you know, manga as well, and they've been very well received. So hopefully, fingers crossed, we can get selling enough that um, Vertical will turn around and say, okay, we want the next manga from this mangaka. So thanks for watching. Don't forget to comment, rate, subscribe, and bye-bye.